So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing Ledgers today, which is chapter 11. And as I said, the chapter in your textbook basically covers everything anyway. Okay? So you can teach yourself, but what I'm going to be presenting today hopefully will just help you more. Okay? So going back to the accounting process, as I said at the start of the year, we've sort of skipped all over the place and we're going to now start bringing it together. So with a transaction, we already know that a transaction is a business event and with a transaction there's always two items or more affected. If you buy something for cash, you've purchased that something and you've used cash in doing it. Okay? We then skipped journals and ledgers and we went on to, from the transaction, basically income statements and balance sheets. Okay? You've actually already come across trial balances as well. That's where we've done all of our transactions and we're left with a list of items. And then that's where, like your test yesterday, you take the list of items and you place them exactly where they belong and that's it. So with a list of items, you're dealing with one piece of information at a time. Okay? The transaction, you're dealing with two. Okay? All right, so I need to explain the reason why we're doing ledgers and, yeah, throw me, thank you very much. Um, so the reason why we're doing ledgers, okay? Before we get to ledgers, you can see the journals are here. Ultimately, there's lots of journals in accounting. We, in this course, only do one, and the information that goes into that one journal is the exact same information that goes into ledgers. So that journal becomes quite simple once you understand ledgers. It's just the same information in a slightly different format. So we can skip over journals now and go straight through the ledgers. When we're finished with ledgers, that's our transactions taken care of, and so then we are given a list of items, a trial balance from there, we can do the income statement and balance sheet. Okay, so we've got transactions, and what you guys have done so far this year is when you're given a transaction, we go and place it into a T-form balance sheet. So I'll do that really quickly, just looking at those transactions, and uh, we'll go from there, just to refresh your memory a little bit. I only contributed capital $10,000. So it's a transaction, there's two items affected. We've got capital, 10,000, and we've got cash at the bank, 10,000. Next one, purchased inventory for $1,000 plus $100 GST, okay? So the item that we've got is inventory of $1,000 and GST credits. 100 and the total of 100, 1,100 is taken away from the cash at bank. So just as a refresher, whatever has occurred here, the change on this side must equal the change on that side. Three, took out a loan from the bank. So we got a loan from the ANZ bank of 10,000 and our cash has increased 10,000. And finally, we purchased further inventory, $2,000 plus $200 GST. So our inventory has increased by $2,000, our GST credits has increased by $200, and our cash has decreased by $2,200. Down to that. So that's what you've been doing so far. Now, as you can imagine, if you had transactions from, say, 20 different transactions, and you were doing something like this, the opportunity for error is significant. Having only done four transactions, it already looks like a bit of a dog's breakfast. There's, there's crossings out, there's new figures, it's all over the shop, and if I was to total those up, currently they do add up, but if I'd made an error, I wouldn't have a clue where I've gone wrong. I'd have to work all the way through it again. Okay? So we can't just go straight from transactions to a T-form balance sheet to get our list of items errors occur. So that's where ledgers come in. Okay? So, before I introduce ledgers, let me get rid of that. And let me just go through a couple of really quick rules that apply for ledgers. In this T-form balance sheet, where do assets go? Point. One side or the other. Okay, good. Good interaction. Very good liabilities and proprietorship on this side. So we know that A is equal to L plus P, okay? 
Now you guys have been doing the income statement where the point of the income statement is to determine the profit. Where does the profit go to? What do we do with it? Yes, we add whatever we get as the, as the profit in the income statement to the proprietorship section of the balance sheet. So this is the additional new rule that you're about to learn. If profit goes to proprietorship and we get, we figure out profit by doing income less expenses, it would make sense that if we were doing a T form balance sheet slash income statement, we would have those things on those sides. Because if you're getting income, it's increasing your, your proprietorship. And if we've got expenses, it's decreasing your um, proprietorship, so it goes to the other side. Okay. So they are the rules that you must remember when we do ledgers. I'll go through and explain ledgers in a moment. But they are the rules. So what I mean by that is, Those things belong on those sides when we do ledgers. A ledger simply is a little mini balance sheet, just like that, a little T form balance sheet for every individual item. So let's have a look at the transactions and I'll show you what I mean and then we can discuss what we need to do. Ultimately with your rules here, each item goes on whatever side it belongs to unless it's decreasing and then it goes to the opposite side. So just remember that. This thing here is the most important thing. Start drawing it at the top right-hand corner or left-hand corner of your page. Every, every um, ledger exercise, just do that. A, L, P, expense, income. Learn it, know it, make sure you, you understand it, okay? Because that's what you need to know. So, for a ledger, let's look, go through a, an exercise and we'll see if you if so the owner contributed capital $10,000. So I'm going to create a mini balance sheet for a ledger account for Cash at Bank. What I do is I write in it what it is. So Cash at Bank's a current asset. What's its natural side? The left-hand side. Now the left-hand side in accounting is known as the debit side. It's nothing to do with debits or credits or credits, no, that's just what it's called, and that's the credit side. So if we're increasing our cash at bank, and it's an asset, it goes on the debit side. And in this case, we are increasing our cash at bank because the owner's contributed cash to the business. So I'm going to write $10,000, and then the other item gets its own ledger account. So in this case, capital, which is proprietorship, belongs on the credit side, its natural side, and we've gone from zero proprietorship to 10,000, so it's going on its natural side 10,000. You can see with every transaction within ledgers, you're always going to have an entry on the left-hand side, and whatever goes on the left-hand side, the total's gonna to go on the right-hand side as well, okay? So I'll just do the, the next one to get you um, making sense of it. Purchased inventory for a thousand plus one hundred dollars GST. So we've got inventory, which is an asset. Its natural side is this side, unless it's decreasing. In this case, we're purchasing it, so it's increasing. One thousand dollars. We've also got GST credits, which is an asset, and it's increasing, so it goes on its natural side. And the other item was we used cash to purchase it. $1,100. So there's a couple of rules, as I said, whatever goes on the left, we must have the equal amount on the right, and, um, and items go on their natural side unless they're decreasing. So both of those rules apply for this, this one here because we use cash to purchase it. So cash is decreasing, so it should be going on the opposite side. And in addition to that, for the transaction that we've done, we've got two debit entries, so the total, must go on the other side. 1100, done, okay? So they're ledgers, it's not quite complete. I'll finish it off for you. You can divide each half of a ledger into three columns. Those columns are date, details, 
or cross-reference, and then the amount. Now you don't put in the titles or, or anything like that, but that's where you go. So this was May the 1st for the only contributing cash, it would have been May 1, May 1, and then this one was May the 2nd, so we've got May 2, May 2, May 2. And the final piece of info is that cross-reference. And this is so that if an error made, is made, we can track down where it's gone wrong, okay? So for every transaction I'm looking at May 1, so this is my cash and bank account, the cross-reference is any other accounts that were used for this transaction that were appear on the other side, okay? So the cash at bank, the other account was capital, that appeared on the other side. So here I'm just writing capital. Okay. Here, the other account was cash at bank. So sometimes you need to abbreviate, but if at all possible, write as much as you possibly can in as full a detail as possible. Here, we've got inventory. I'm looking for the cross-reference that occurred on the other side. So in this case, it's cash at bank. So cash at bank, GST credits. Again, I'm looking for the entry on the other side. So cash at bank, and this one, the cash at bank, which paid for the inventory and the GST credits, both of these two items appear on the other side from here. So you want to write both of them in. So in this case, inventory slash GST credits. Okay? That's it. 